time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready, we're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning, this is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious October weekend? Well, Ryan, we're in the fourth quarter and the home stretch. I mean, 2018 is flying by. You know what they say, whether you're having fun or not. That's right. So try to have some fun if you can. <laughs> uh, I'm all about fun. I'm all about fun. <laughs> I know so. you are, Bob. What do you got for us today, buddy? (laughs) All right. Well, we got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about should you stay or should you go? Are you getting the best advice from your financial advisor or is it time to look for a new advisor? Bob and I are going to discuss if changing your advisor really makes sense. Will the grass really be greener on the other side? We're going to talk about distance running and financial planning. we got the New York Marathon coming up here in about two weeks. So Bob and I are going to discuss some of the similarities between good financial planning and training for a marathon, along with this week's financial propaganda. There's a lot of stuff out there in the news, media, you need to avoid. We're going to call out the biggest offenders of financial propaganda. And we have our star financial advisor, Jen, certified financial angel on the show this morning. She's going to talk about a real retirement case that she worked on, talk about some of the mistakes a certain couple was making with their planning and investing so you can make sure that you're on track doing the right things with your own planning and investing. So let's hop to it. Bob, you know, in our combined, it's kind of scary to think, almost 60 years of giving financial advice now, we've been around a lot longer than we like to think. You know, we've seen a lot of people make good decisions, bad decisions to leave their financial advisor. Like when you had a couple leave you at the height of the tech bubble and sold all their bonds and bought tech stocks and then lost all their money. That was a bad decision. But let's talk about, you know, when it makes sense to leave your advisor and when it doesn't make sense, you know, what's legitimate, what's not. You know, and what I think about a lot is just my advisor has gotten so big, he doesn't seem to reach out like he used to. Is that a good thing, bad thing? Does it matter? Sure, it matters, right? It's all about relationships and trust is built during relationships. You know, see, trust doesn't come at the beginning of a relationship. It comes during a relationship. So let's take a look at our industry. It's called financial services. What's the number one reason people leave their advisor? What's the number one complaint we get from investors about their advisor, right? Oh, I'd say more than anything else, it's I never hear from my financial advisor, right? <laughs> it's that yeah. simple. I mean, yeah. It's called financial services. And the number one reason people leave is lack of service. So it should be called financial lack of service services, I guess, right? <laughs> has a nice ring to it, Bob. <laughs> it does. has a nice ring to it. But you know, Ryan, this is not a new issue. This is not a new complaint. That's why we created the process we call 1241, right? If you're a client, you should have somebody review your portfolio every month. You should have a quarterly contact and rebalancing with cash flow every quarter. And you should have a face-to-face financial planning meeting once a year. It's real simple. Now, how many clients can you handle with a 1241 process? I mean, we've done the math on this because, I mean, we both come from a background of having to deal with hundreds of clients and that just doesn't work. So we found when you get to somewhere over 100 plus clients, that's when it gets very hard to give the right customized service that you really deserve you know, as a client of a financial advisor. Absolutely, right. So if you're not hearing from your advisor, it means that they're either too busy or they don't care. Now, what would be a good reason for keeping a person like that? I mean, I can't think of any good reason to keep a person like that. And I think you know why it's really critical, Bob, is... Why is that? Let's face it, right? Your financial plan, we always talk about this, it's a working document. You don't just mm-hmm. say, hey, these are my goals, plug it in once and hope that you know 20 years from now, you made it to where you needed to make it to your destination. It's really about the tweaks and the changes you make along the way, because your life's going to change. Markets obviously change on a daily basis, and things need to be reassessed because tax laws change, estate planning rules change. So you, know, you need that maintenance of your portfolio and guidance to really make sure that you're always on track. No, that's so true, right? That's why you need a fiduciary, not a stockbroker, not a salesman, you know, someone who wants to keep lots and lots of clients to generate lots and lots of commissions. You know, you need a process-driven advisor who's going to help you get from your point A, your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values. 
Yeah, exactly right. You need a partner. You need someone that you have a good working relationship with. Well, how about this, Bob? I've heard this statement before. I went to a dinner seminar with a financial advisor and found him to be very entertaining and engaging, much more so than my current advisor. Is that a good reason to leave your advisor? No, I don't think so. I don't think personality is the reason you stay or, or leave an advisor. And somebody who's engaging might be just good at entertainment, right? So it's not necessarily the right place to be. You know, the one thing you should do right now is go to FINRA, F-I-N-R-A, broker check, and make sure you're working with an advisor who doesn't have a poor track record in terms of, you know, having problems with the SEC. Yeah, that's a great point because now it's very transparent. You can see, especially if you're in the interview mode with financial advisors, it is a good idea to see, like, do they have some sort of spot on their record for things they've done in the past and that's something you really want to know before you engage, with, especially with a new advisor, especially if you've been invited to like a steak dinner and they're telling you all the great things they're going to do. Well, you definitely want to go past that superficiality and see what their track record actually is. And now more than ever, it's accessible. Hey, look, anybody can have a ding on a record ride, but we transferred in a client the other day whose advisor had 16 actionable complaints where with the majority of them, they had to settle with the investor and pay out of pocket fines of you know just giving bad advice or inappropriate advice. So it's a good place to start is to look and make sure that your current advisor or someone you're considering has a clean track record. Well, I hear you say here, Bob, is just because someone's charming doesn't mean they give good financial advice. Now, you are charming and good financial advice, so it's, I would call that the best of all worlds. And I don't have any problems with my record on broker checks, so that's even better. <laughs> but, you know, Ry, the best Ponzi scammer has the best personality, right? The biggest cheats in our business are the people who are smiling as they're sticking that knife in your back. Yeah, exactly. Better do some more homework. Another thing that we hear often, I think this is actually a very big red flag, is the market crashed and I lost a ton of money in my portfolio. You know, That's usually a sign your advisor has not been managing the risk correctly. And then sadly, the only time you really know is when the market goes down, am I protected or not? So I think that's one you really got to make sure that someone's actually addressing risk in your portfolio, Bob. Hey, yeah, right. That's what it's all about. It's about a process. You need to have an advisor who's checking on you, on your process, on your portfolio to make sure that you're not taking more risk than you signed up for. You know, Ry, if you had a portfolio just back in 2014 that was 40% in the stock market and 60% in bonds, and you didn't rebalance or do anything that should be done on an annual basis, what do you think your asset allocation would be right now? I mean, right now you probably have way too much money in stocks. And the problem is when the market finally does go down at some point, like it did last week, well, you're going to feel the pain, no pun intended. Yeah, it was a good wake up call, you know, because you would have 10% more in stocks than you signed up for. And that's what happens. When I look back at all the crashes that have occurred in my career, you know, you look at investors who got hurt the most for people who just allowed their asset allocation to drift. They allow their portfolio to become overweighted in the winners, right? The stocks that were overvalued. And they didn't realize it was overvalued until they had that disaster statement come in the mail. You need someone who puts your interest first. You know what that's called, Rye? It's called being a fiduciary, Bob. You got it. You need a fiduciary. Stockbrokers, annuity salesmen, you know, avoid them like a plague. Yeah. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a real financial plan, not just an investment plan that encompasses my goals and it's updated on a regular basis. Here's your shot to get that second opinion. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, if you're one of the next 10 callers, Bob and I will run for you complimentary, our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review that addresses everything. You simply just bring those statements in print them off the computer, put them in a folder. We're going to build you your own personalized portal so we get a bird's eye view of your finances and we can look at all those critical components. We're going to look at things like diversification. What underlying risks do you have in your portfolio? When the market sold off last week, did you feel it at a greater level than you should? We're going to show you where those pitfalls are and how to protect yourself or bulletproof your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden fees in portfolios. I know it's shocking. Bob and I are going to break down all those hidden mutual fund costs, insurance, annuity costs, brokerage product costs, show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio, and we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. We're going to show you how to fill in that income gap with a very reliable, consistent income stream, and then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, and we're going to determine that very critical question. Are you going to outlive your money, or more importantly, is your money 
going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we have worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So let's put your plan to the test. Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, the Chief Investment Strategist at Payne Capital Management. And Friday marked the 31st anniversary of the greatest stock market crash in U.S. history. That's right. Back in October of 1987, on the 19th, the Dow dropped 22%. Now, if we were to have an equivalent drop today, the Dow would be down over 5,500 points. Now, a study conducted at Harvard and Boston University predicts a drop like 1987 could occur once every 104 years. So it's possible that we won't experience another 1987 magnitude crash in our lifetime. Or, of course, we might have one next week. Since no one can predict the future, no one knows exactly what the market's going to do on a day-to-day basis. See, the markets are dominated by large investors. When they decide to simultaneously get out of the market for whatever reason, the market will drop and in some rare cases like 1987, actually crash. Now, the stock market actually over the last couple of decades have actually been relatively calm. Might not seem that way, especially after last week's 1600 point decline and this week's 500 point up day and Thursday's 327 point decline. I always find it amazing how much the talking heads on financial news channels learn so much during the course of the day. The very people who at 930 have no idea what's going to happen or why it's happening are then really expert at four o'clock when they know exactly what the market did and why they did it. So this week is no exception. Many of the pundits on national TV were pointing to the Federal Reserve and interest rates, China, tariffs, or the turmoil in Saudi Arabia for the recent volatility. But just like in 1987, when the market crashed 22%, the market simply went down because there were more sellers than buyers. Back on Tuesday, when the market went up 500 points, we had more buyers than sellers. And on Thursday, once again, the sellers dominated the trading. So keep in mind, in the short term, the stock market is a voting machine driven by the short-term emotions of large buyers and sellers. But in the long run, it's a weighing machine, and it's all based on economic fundamentals. And right now, they've never been better. But remember, you can't predict, but you can prepare. Be certain that your portfolio is appropriate to the current environment. And always remember the famous quote that those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Now, if you're wondering, do I have a portfolio that's appropriate to the current environment? Is it appropriate to my risk tolerance? Is it going to give me the highest probability of achieving my goals, my dreams with my values? Well, why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain. Now, back to the show. It's Ryan Payne. It's Bob Payne. No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Bob and I do our best to give you very common sense advice you can use on your own planning and investing. And that's why we put together our video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. Just a great way to get started with the financial planning process. Make it less daunting. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. Just a way to get started with the financial planning process, text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, in our household, we have a very long tradition of long distance running. You were a college track star. You ran everything from the quarter mile all the way to cross country. 
And I think your fastest half mile split was 149, correct? Which is pretty fast for any track. That was a long, long time ago, right? The older <laughs> I get, the faster I was. <laughs> so maybe it's like 145 now. <laughs> you know, I ran for Villanova, which was a great pride for the family. And my sister, your daughter, is running the full marathon in the next two weeks, which we're all going to be cheering her on. So good luck, Allie. And the one thing you know we can really correlate is training as a long distance runner and financial planning have a lot of similarities and you know we talk about this all the time but it's all about planning ahead of time just like when you're planning to run a big race you know right it is it's all about planning and preparation you know when you grow up playing sports no one plays track right it's like something you have to really want to do and when you're out there on the track or when you're out there in a cross country meet there's nobody to pass the ball to. There's only one person to blame for your success or failure, right? Yeah, it makes it kind of a harsh sport in that way because you can't just blame it on your teammate because you either ran the time or you didn't. You, you either put the work in or you didn't. And that's really what it's about. You have to do planning. You have to do preparation because no one plans to fail, right? But what they don't do is they fail to plan. And that's what financial planning is all about. It's you know about running that race of life and it's slow and steady that wins that race. Yeah. And I mean, I know when I used to run races and you would train, you'd actually factor in all the workouts that you would do ahead of time. And then we would actually taper up before the race. And I think that's the same thing with retirement. It's kind of like, okay, are you five years out? Are you 10 years out from retirement? Are you in retirement now? And you know, there's different type of preparation you're going to need at different stages. But the more you start thinking about it now, the better off you're going to be when it's finally time to retire. So you know, if you've been procrastinating on it and waiting and waiting and waiting, the sooner you just get started, the more prepared and the better you're going to be set up. Because there's a lot of things you can do, Bob, from a tax standpoint. We talk about that a lot, about how you diversify your portfolio to protect yourself when the market goes down, especially as you're getting close to retirement. Well, you know, right, that makes so much sense. You know, it's running the race is just the easy part of it. Preparing for the race, doing the heavy lifting, doing all that hard work ahead of time. So you want to do all the right things while you're preparing for retirement. And then when you're in retirement, then you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Yeah. And the other thing is, I remember when I ran, you know, I was always very, very particular about my diet, right? Before oh, that yeah. big race, you always have that big bowl of pasta, get the carbo loading in. Unfortunately, when I was younger, I could eat anything I want. Can't do that anymore. But you need the right fuel to do that. And I think the same thing here too is like, you've got to employ some sort of discipline with your portfolio. A lot of times I feel like we're personal trainers, Bob. He's like forcing people when you want to grab that chocolate cake, we're hitting your hand and saying, no, you know, you've got to eat your vegetables and you got to eat things that are healthy. I think a lot of times we want to make rash decisions with our portfolio and it's helpful to have somebody say like, no, you need to do this instead to stay on track. You don't think Bitcoin's a good idea, right? <laughs> I had a lot of clients that wanted to buy it at the top of the market. Yeah. But those things become tempting along the way, or let's face it, last week we had a big sell off in the market. And number one, you know, how prepared were you ahead of time? Number two, were you attempted to sell out of your portfolio? Well, you know, Rod, this weekend I spent a lot of time with some professional football players, you know, that play in the NFL. And they're responsible, you know, for their own conditioning. And, you know, they're responsible for their own diet. So as they put it, they said, look, Bob, we eat healthy. We work with trainers because we're making an investment in ourselves. I mean, we're our own personal corporation, you know, a self-contained corporation. Same thing is for you, you know, with your plan. You know, you're responsible for your planning. Now, there's plenty of professionals out there that can help you, but you got to seek out that help and you've got to have a healthy diet of doing what's right, of putting money away, you know, saving properly, investing properly and doing all the planning issues that need to be addressed. Don't you agree, Ry? Yeah, exactly right. And that's the thing, you know, got to remember a financial plan is not an investment plan. So it really is thinking about what you can do to optimize taxes. You know, the one thing we all have to deal with is when we turn 70 and a half, we have to start taking mandatory distributions from our IRA. So there's a lot of prep work or things you can do ahead of time to alleviate that tax burden later. Right now, tax-free bonds, interest rates have gone up. You know, they're more attractive than they were just a couple months ago. So if you're in a high tax bracket, there's a lot of way to generate a lot of tax-free income and things like that. So there's a lot of things to think about and pull together with a plan that you're probably not optimizing because you're probably just not thinking about it. And the other thing, Bob, I remember when running races, remember when you would just go out way too fast 
on that first, uh, let's say it was the half, the first quarter mile, and then you know, used to joke about coming down that home stretch with a piano on your back because you went out too fast. <laughs> I the, used to the old expression that is, right, that bear waits for you on the back curve. You know, as you come around that last <laughs> turn, if you went out too fast, it is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen in my life. Somebody <laughs> struggling with that lactic acid building up in your muscles trying to get to that finish line. Yeah. And I think a good example of that when it comes to your investment portfolio is how much risk are you taking? Because let's face it, 2008 wasn't that long ago. And remember, your portfolio going up and up and up, and then bam, in a matter of literally months, we saw markets decline by 40 50%. And now you might be making the same mistake, right? The markets had a magnificent run over the last decade. You know, Have you taken risk off the table? And last week, I keep going back to it, but it's such a great reminder that you need to be diversified. And when things are going really, really well, you've got to make some smart decisions so you don't come huffing and puffing into to the backstretch. Yeah, I think it's just like anything else. There's no institutional memory when it comes to investing. It's like every generation has to learn for themselves not to overweight a specific winning strategy because when you have too much of a good thing, it can turn out to be a really disastrous bad thing. And when it comes to your financial plan, when it comes to your portfolio strategy, Slow and steady wins the race. The best portfolio is a boring portfolio. Yeah, sadly, that is true. And we had a gentleman in the office last week. We, we did great analysis where we can take all your mutual funds and different investment products and we can basically show what's underneath it or do an x-ray of it. And we showed him almost every fund he had. He had all the same holdings. You know, He had Apple. Mm-hmm. He had Amazon. He thought he had all these different funds. So he thought he had all this diversification. But when we actually, you know, essentially went under the hood, he owned all the same stuff. And we just said, look, I mean, when this stuff pulls back, and it did last week, this is going to be really painful. Good place for the offer. Well, that's where Wall Street is just so unfair to the average investor, right? They put titles on these funds, and, you know, it doesn't sound anything like what you're investing in. And unfortunately, you're very busy, and you don't take the time to really know that. And it's important to make sure that you don't have that overlap. And if you're thinking to yourself, you know what? I need to be better financially prepared. I need to do better financial planning so I can be financially healthy in my retirement. I need to know what I own right now. Is it appropriate? Do I know what I'm paying? I need to know if I'm positioned to succeed. Well, here's your opportunity to know. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200,000 for retirement, Ryan and I will prepare for you your own full holistic review where we will look at everything. Gather all those statements that just came in for the quarter. Stick them in a folder. Stick them in a shopping bag. We're going to take your statements and review everything with you and build your own personalized 360 financial portal. Now, this will allow you to see your net worth in real time when you feel like looking at it. It's going to take all those goals of education, of retirement, of funding that retirement, and demonstrate in real time how you're progressing towards those goals and what steps you need to take next. We're going to sit down and break down your portfolio into the three key elements of a successful strategy. That would be diversification, fees, and income. You want to be truly diversified. You don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. You don't want to get that surprise statement where your portfolio drops way more than the market. There are hidden risks in every portfolio. We want to be certain what those hidden risks are revealed. Secondly, we want to look at cost. I hate to be overcharged, and I certainly don't want to be overcharged by my own portfolio. And lastly, income. Let's be certain that we have a reliable source of income that fills that income gap that we all have in our retirement years. We're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan that's going to answer that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For 40 years, our family's been helping families like you get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success that only a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion just to make sure you're on track at 844 844- 752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. If you have over 200,000 saved for retirement, you're one of the next 10 callers, 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. 
Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there this week in the hard world of financial propaganda? You know what, Rye? I found financial truth. And I found financial an article truth. entitled, Nobody Knows Nothing. I don't know <laughs> wow. If that's proper English or not. But what it talked about is that market forecasters are often wrong, but they're never in doubt. And that there's absolutely no financial wizard, there's no talking head out there who's on national television you know, promoting their forecast, who's not really promoting a newsletter or a book. So it really doesn't matter, you know, what their experience has been. The future and the ability to predict the future is impossible. And I think that should be obvious to everybody. But there was a Dr. Tetlock that back in 1985 interviewed 280 experts to find out, you know, their confidence or their certitude or their predictions. And on average, Ra, you know what they found out? They didn't do much better than random guessing. And the other thing they found out about experts is they tend to make very extreme forecasts. Does that surprise you? I mean, you just have to turn on the TV every day. (laughs) And yeah, I think it's one extreme forecast after another, right? I feel like the financial media specifically loves to propagate fear, which we always say gets in the way of a really good investment strategy. And that's why sometimes it's just more beneficial to turn it off. Well, you know, Rob, we're talking about experts. Wouldn't you say Warren Buffett's a guru? I mean, I would say he's probably the guru of gurus, given his phenomenal track record and the second wealthiest American, maybe third now. I'm not well, sure. you know what he says? He says he has a process in place that guards against magical thinking. <laughs> I like that. Well, what's his process against <laughs> magical thinking? That's a great term. Yeah, because he says no one can predict the direction of the markets on a daily basis. So he's not predicting what he's doing is he's making investment bets on the future. Yeah, and that's what we forget, right? It is a long-term game. And well, kind of playing into that, Bob, I found an article that says the big turn for the markets, which came out this past week. And this newsletter writer claims that he warned about the glaring bearish divergences in the stock market for the past several months, and especially for the last part of September. And this looks so similar to other important tops, is what his comments were. You know, claiming that he knew this market was going to correct over the last two weeks and he's been warning us for a long time. But you know, I think one thing we always forget, Bob, is let's say this market's going down about, let's say, 5%. That's pretty normal. In an average year, the market does correct 5% on average three times a year. So if someone goes out every year and predicts there's going to be a 5 or a 10% correction, do they actually have gifted insight or are they just looking at history? I suspect they're just looking at history. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that's what we got to remember and remind ourselves when the markets do get more volatile and things don't look right is this is a very normal type of market. You know, it's normal for markets to sell off and not just go straight up. You know, markets aren't linear. I mean, I think it's good to remind ourselves that as these headlines come out week after week. Well, what I loved about my article, Rye, is that this guy spoke the truth. You know, no one has gifted insight. No one can predict what's unpredictable. No one can know what's unknowable. And the only thing you really have to fear is a recession. Of course, if you subscribe to his newsletter, he has a very reliable recession forecasting service available for a nominal fee. So these guys can't help themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's always a catcher. You know, get my crystal ball for, you know, a discounted price on a monthly basis. But I think it's important though. I think last week is a great reminder when the markets do sell off that you need to have the right allocation, Bob. You need to make sure that your portfolio is structured correctly. And we see this all the time now. When you bring your statements in, we're finding that a lot of times you've got one or two problems. Number one, maybe you're taking way too much risk. You've got way too much money in the market, specifically US stocks, growth stocks, which have seen the biggest sell-off in the last week because it's become a crowded trade. Or on the flip side, maybe you've been sitting with way too much cash and you're trying to figure out when to actually deploy that cash. And you really got to look at these pullbacks in the market as really a nice place to start to add or allocate monies in your portfolio. Yeah. I mean, if you have a disciplined strategy, you look at these dips in the market as opportunities, as gifts you know, from the market gods to give you an opportunity to buy low. I mean, we all know that you buy low and sell high, but it's so hard to do it in the face of corrections. If you're listening to these market gurus, in other words, you need to invest on purpose, you know, for the purpose of achieving your financial goals, 
not to satisfy, you know, some short term horizon or what some, you know, market guru is going to try and tell you is going to happen. Yeah, exactly right. So I think it's really important, especially now that you're managing your risk. And if you're sitting on cash, the other thing is there's been a lot of talk about interest rates. You know, interest rates have actually gone up. So it is actually an attractive time if you're looking to get some income for your portfolio. There's a lot of ways now to generate income with safety. You know, tax free bonds we talked about earlier in the show right now. You know, the yields on those have come up significantly. So if you're in a high tax bracket right now, there's a lot of ways to deploy your cash in a conservative way and they've become way more attractive than they've been for quite a few years. You know, Ryan, our combined 60 years, the only hedge against market risk and market volatility that I've ever found is to own high quality bonds that have a fixed interest rate and a fixed maturity date. In other words, you know exactly how much you're going to get paid and you know exactly when you're going to get your money back. You know, we've been talking week after week about the risk of these bond funds. They don't give you any downside protection, only a fixed coupon and a fixed maturity date on your bond portfolio. Take a look at what you have now. Make sure you're hedging your portfolio properly because that's the only true hedge there is in the financial markets. Yeah. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to get a game plan in place. You know, I've got way too much money at risk. I've got way too much money in cash. I need to know what to do with that. Here's your shot to get that game plan. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 safe for retirement. Bob and I will run our total financial master plan and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review that addresses everything. Simply print off those statements, print off those holdings, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal so you can view your whole financial life at a bird's eye view. And we're going to look at all those critical components. And we're going to look at diversification. What underlying risks do you have in your portfolio? Are you protecting yourself against any sort of market decline? You need to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden cost in investment portfolios. I know that's shocking, but those mutual funds, annuities, insurance products, brokerage products, they have a lot of hidden fees. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio, and we're going to look at income. Having a reliable stream of income in retirement to replace that income gap when you stop working is so, so important. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies we have worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your own retirement. Our team will run for you, your own personal, total, financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost, and there's no strings attached. But of course, there's no plan unless you call or text right now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Rye. We're the pain of no pain, no gain, financial radio. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Let's find out. Bob and I, we like to give you common sense advice you can use with your own planning and investing. That's why we put together our video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive, just a great way to get the financial planning process started. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. This is a great way just to start the financial planning process. Download it for free at 555-888. Text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. If you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Go to BeBullish.com. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check out for yourself. Go to BeBullish.com. You can subscribe to the show. We also put other timely articles, information up there to keep you at the top of the financial world. And you can catch me most weeks on major networks talking about the financial markets, giving you our purview of what's going on. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And if it's a really good question, we always answer them right here on the show. And to help us with questions this week, we have our producer, Mr. Mark Haywood. 
What's shaking there, Mark? Good as always to be with you gentlemen on this show. Always excited to pitch in my two cents. It is worth just that, two cents, my thoughts. I would not <laughs> ask me for anything more, but that's why we have you guys. Hey, I like it. Mark. I like it. We have a good team. <laughs> a good team indeed. Let's dive into the mailbag. We have a couple of good questions this week that have come in. We'll kick it off with one from Oscar in Morristown, New Jersey. Oscar says, Bob, for years I've had half of my money with one broker and half with someone else. They're both nice guys, and I thought that it would be good to get advice from two different people. I can see that, Oscar, kind of countering opinions, but now it just seems confusing. Am I better off to have it all in one place? Oscar, there's so many investors that think, you know, if I break up my portfolio and I get a bunch of brokers competing with their advice, I'm going to get the best advice because I'm going to hear the best from all minds. Well, you know, investing is not that difficult if you do it based on a plan. And so having competing ideas, I think I understand why you're confused. It's really not the best way to go because whenever you have your assets in different custodians, there's going to be charges. So you're duplicating charges, you're duplicating fees, and you're not necessarily getting better advice. And if the other advisor thinks they're competing with someone else, they might take more risk in the advice that they give you. You know, right, when we see these different portfolios that come in every week, when we see people with more than one advisor, well, actually, we saw one last week with 19. That was pretty bad, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I mean, it can be pretty tremendous in terms of the amount of accounts and paperwork, and it just never seems to be a concerted effort. And that's why, to your point, Bob, I love that 360 portal. It's just such a powerful tool to be able to get a real, like I call it that bird's eye view of how everything's working together or not working together, which is usually the case. So it's just so important that if you're going to figure out your plan for retirement, that you start looking at how all your assets can start working in concert. And a lot of times when you have different advisors giving different advice, it doesn't really mesh into one solid unified plan. Well, you know, Rod, there is an economy of scale. For example, we use institutional bond management. We have to have a certain amount of money in order to qualify to have an account with us. And if you break up your portfolio and you're following the same asset allocation in different accounts, you miss out on that opportunity. You miss out on the opportunity to be able to buy wholesale. Now, you know, we're all retail investors, but I don't know about you. I like wholesale prices. I don't love retail prices. <laughs> shop at Costco, not at shop right, right? <laughs> so That's it, man. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly right. A lot of times when you consolidate, because what happens is if you have one broker or advisor who's only managing X amount, you're not taking advantage of the fact that those discounted prices can be can be brought together when you consolidate assets. Our industry is all about lowering the fee when there's more assets to manage. So having that lower cost concerted effort is really critical. And that's something that you definitely want to consider, especially when you're getting close to an into retirement. Well, right. Isn't that what we were talking about earlier? Why a lot of investors received a lack of service from their advisor, the smaller amount in your portfolio, the less attention you're going to get from that advisor, no matter what they tell you or promise you, you know, the squeaky wheel gets all the grease and they're going to pay attention to the accounts that have the most money in it. So by breaking it up, you're putting yourself in a position where you're not only going to not get a good advice, you might actually end up getting no advice. Well, it's worse than that, Bob. <laughs> I can even add to that is the fact that when you have someone giving you advice in a vacuum, meaning if you have an advisor who doesn't really understand or know what you're doing with your other money, you know, how can you really get good, solid advice? It's very hard to advise something in a vacuum. And that's what you end up doing when you get all these advisors advising small segments of your portfolio. It just doesn't work well when it's not thought out of in the context of everything you're trying to do in that master plan. Well, we thank you for writing in, Oscar. At the very least, we hope you've learned that Costco is a wonderful place to shop. There's ginormous pizzas you can get, and we also hope that you've got some good thoughts to get you thinking about retirement and consolidating all your accounts. Let's move over now to Meredith. She's out on Port Washington, Long Island. She says, Ryan, we've never lived on a budget our entire lives, and my husband is very resistant to having a budget once we retire. But without a budget, how do we make sure that we don't run out of money 10 years before we die? Yeah, Meredith, I mean, that's a very fair question, right? We say it on the show all the time. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? And we all obviously prefer the latter. That's why sitting down and just going through the budgeting process, and we do that in our office where we'll just break it down. We'll look at, okay, what incomes are coming in? What type of expenses are going out the door? You know, There's a lot of ways we can do that. But without having a budget, I mean, that's really 
the place you have to start with retirement planning. You can't make any sense of the investments you have. You can't make any sense of any decisions you're going to make if you don't really know what that income gap is going to be in retirement. Because let's face it, when you stop working, the spigot turns off and you may have Social Security coming in. If you're really lucky, you have a pension, but how are you going to replace that income and what income do you need to replace? Meaning what money are you really spending? You know, everybody really wants to have a budget, right? It's just who wants to sit down and write down, you know, what you spent on groceries and what you spent at the gas station and what you spent at Costco. It's a bit tedious. I, and I can see why people are resistant. It's like, you know, who wants to go on a diet and suffer and, you know, have to do without? So that's what's great about our 360 financial portal is that you can import your Visa card, your checking account, and it automatically tells you what you're spending your money on. I know when you first started with your 360 financial portal, you found out you were paying for subscriptions that you no longer used. Yeah, no, I definitely had a couple of those gym memberships that I hadn't visited in a long time that were billing me every month. But I have to say it's not that daunting with that 360 portal. It just makes it so much easier than it used to be. And you know, the nice thing about the whole financial planning process is it's nice to have someone help walk you through that process. Like I think it's very daunting and it's to your point, Bob, it's no fun to sit down and do a budget. But if you have someone else who's kind of guiding your hand through it, figuring out what those numbers look like, helping you input the data so that we can just get a real clear picture of what you're spending, it just makes it so much easier. And then you're on your track to financial freedom, right? Now yeah, you're on, think, on track. Yeah, I think especially, right, if you're an entrepreneur, you own your own business, you really never had a budget, never balanced your checkbook because you're thinking, well, you know what, if I need a little bit of money, I'll work a little harder. You know, I'll put a little a few hours extra in. But that doesn't work when you're in retirement and it doesn't work you know, when you no longer have that income or that ability to just crank up your income because you want to put a little extra time in, you know, once you're retired, the number one goal is to stay retired. And that is a good goal. So, Ryan, let me ask you a question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized do these two folks sound? Oscar Meredith, you've got a lot of work to do, Bob. That's a hard two and a half. It's not pretty. And let me ask all of you, on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized would you like to be? Wouldn't we all want to be a 10? Well, if you want to be a 10, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers who have saved over 200000 for retirement. Ryan and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal, which will give you a holistic view of everything that you own and update it on a daily basis in real time when it's convenient for you to take a look. More importantly, we'll look at all your goals education, retirement, anything that you need to fund. It'll give you a report card daily on your progress towards those goals. And boy, it's nothing like getting a gold star when you've achieved all your goals in real time and you can check it anytime you feel uncertain. And lastly, we want you to bring in all of your investment statements so we can analyze your portfolio to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Diversification, fees and income. We want to be really diversified across asset classes, within asset classes. We want to make sure you're not taking any unnecessary risks in this volatile market period that we're experiencing right now. You want to be certain you don't have any overlap, that you don't have too much of a good thing that turns into a bad thing in bear markets. Fees. Who wants to be overcharged? I don't. I would certainly not want to be overcharged by my own portfolio. Our spreadsheet will tell you exactly what the costs are of your current strategy. And lastly, we all need to fill that gap, that income gap in retirement while we're retired, when we're preparing for retirement, when we're about to retire. Let's make sure we have the appropriate amount of residual cash flow in our portfolio that will give us a lifetime of income that we can't outlive. We're going to tie it all together into one customized, personal total financial master plan, utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values, with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as only a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's 844 844- Seven five two six six nine two. Here's your shot to get that second opinion. We still have a couple slots left. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, here's your chance to take the pain capital management challenge. Make sure you're on track at 844 
752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. Bob and I want to make sure you're on track for your retirement. So we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income. You cannot outlive just a baseline. Get the financial planning process started. You can download it for free. Text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. What you need to know about creating an income. You cannot outlive just to get the financial planning process started. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now we have a very, very special guest on the show. My colleague, Bob's colleague, Jen, certified financial angel, our CFA on staff, financial advisor. How are you doing, Jen? I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. I haven't been on since I took over Bob's spot. I mean, you were an amazing <laughs> co-host. <laughs> well, you're um, back by popular demand, Jennifer, let me tell you. Oh, thanks, Bob. I appreciate that. The masses just keep asking, we want more Jen Angel. <laughs> I thought Less Bob, Bob was gonna... more Jen. <laughs> no, never. So, Jen, this is our spotlight segment where we actually look at a real case, real couple that's looking to retire or they're retired and just some of the mistakes they're making, how you helped get them on track really for retirement. So why don't you give us the rundown on your latest case that you worked on? Yeah. And Ryan, you and I actually met with them about a week ago and they heard us on the radio at one point and they said, you know, we got to I have someone else take a look at our investments. And who's um, that Jen Angel? Yeah. yeah. Who's that beautiful voice that I just heard? <laughs> <laughs> and so they um, came to us and we took a look at their portfolio. So they are in their 60s. He's a retired police officer and, you know, is working, has a pension. So they have some income coming in and they are kind of, I guess, cowboy and cowgirl of a couple of investments yes. Yes. <laughs> and they definitely for their age and you know kind of where they're at in life we you know were kind of shocked at how much they had in inequities which we see all the time you know how much they have in the S&P or you know in individual stocks you know in their 60s getting ready to potentially fully retire so this was kind of shocking though <laughs> I have to give them credit though they knew they were taking too much risk yeah. right they have all their money and growth stocks which have done phenomenally well but as we know at some point the party stops and a portfolio like theirs if you're getting close to retirement starts to go down rapidly they're going to be in big trouble so they were at least cognizant of the fact right. that they're taking way too much right. risk which I appreciated like hey yes. we know we're taking a ton of risk just let us know like give us the numbers basically you know give us a whole picture so you know they knew they're taking too much risk but I think when they finally saw it on paper it was like whoa like yeah. definitely you know a shock to them because they're in their 60s and they're 93 percent in equities yeah, and that's what I love about just that 360 portal we put together for them because you know that's where you really can see how the overall allocation is. And then we're able to say, hey, guess what? In a year like 2008, this portfolio would have been down like over 50%. Mm -hmm. And who wants to see their net worth if you got $2 million go to a million dollars yeah. you know, in any given year? That's a buzzkill yeah. you know, times two yeah. or three. I don't know. That's terrible. I mean... If you want to lose like 500 to a million dollars, I could do something with that. <laughs> Jen, we know you could, and you'd have a much better time losing <laughs> yeah. it than to yeah. dissipate I'm like, the I got to move soon. I could use that money. So if you're just planning on losing that much in a given year, like, yeah, I can hand it over. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a huge thing. And not only that, but they're in all these tech stocks too that just got hit really hard from this recent pullback. And if you are now pulling from your portfolio and you have these individual tech stocks like your Netflix or Google, you know, all those things that, you know, can get hit pretty hard in a downturn like we just saw last week. Yeah, we call it the overcrowded trade. And that's funny, we met with them before last week. Yeah. So now we're going to talk to them after last week. But the first thing we said was, look, you've got to reduce this risk. And I mean, last week is case in point, right? Yeah. We've seen tech stocks because they've gone up so much, typically when the market goes down, they go down much more. It's the same kind of magnitude on both sides. Yeah, and you know they have no protection in there. So they have no bonds, they have no certainty, they have no income that's going to be you know there for sure, right? And that's why we want to build in some bonds and some protection there when we see those downturns so you're not hit with a million dollar downturn, God forbid. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't make sense when you're that close to retirement. I mean, you have to start thinking, okay, you know, 2008 was 10 years ago. You were 10 years younger. You were 10 years further away from 
being in retirement. Now you might be at the end of your career. You might be in retirement now. You've got to change the game. Yeah. And even look at a 2000, right? We saw the tech bubble burst like right there. I mean, it's just, it's I'm crazy. I'm enough to remember, Jen. <laughs> I'm I not, was around sorry. for that. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you might appreciate that, right? <laughs> yeah, and then that, and then along with just planning, right? So let's say they're retiring now. You know, there's all these strategies we can do between now until 70 and a half where you have to take out your required distributions and they're in mostly retirement accounts. So they have, you know, seven to five years now where we can plan all these distributions out. And obviously, if they'd come to us 10 years ago, they'd be in much better shape planning wise. But now we can do at least five, seven years of all those income tax planning because that's important. Yeah. Like we said, John, I mean, money saved in taxes is just as green as any money can make invested. And let's be real at 70 and a half your deferred, your retirement accounts are what we call a ticking tax time bomb. You're forced to take money out of your IRAs and that can bump up your tax bracket. So there's a lot of great planning you can do before that to really alleviate you know, that tax burden later. In a lot of ways you can do it tax free, which is, I mean, who doesn't like tax free, John? I do, Ryan. I really do. (laughs) I know you do. I know it speaks to your heart. (laughs) And it's crazy. Even just down, you know, decreasing the risk, they're still going to have over 50,000 in just extra income coming in from a more secure, diversified, more conservative, but still growing portfolio. Yeah. And that's kind of the magic formula, if I use that word, is like, okay, you have the opportunity for growth in your portfolio, but let's create a reliable stream of income that you know you have coming in every single year because there's no way every year you know which way the market's going to go. And that's a terrible way to plan your retirement around hoping the market's going to go up. You know, hope is not a strategy, Jen. It's really not. (laughs) (laughs) Well, great job on this case. I mean, if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a review like this. I have to know the risk of my portfolio. I need to convert my portfolio to make it retirement ready. We still have a couple slots left. If you give us a call right now, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself, Bob, Jen Financial Angel will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we analyze the whole picture. Just bring in your statements, print them off the computer, put them in a folder. We're going to go through all of it for you. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal where we can review everything at a bird's eye view. We're going to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? Did you get hurt last week when the market went down? Are you protected? We're going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. You need a reliable stream of income. We're able to increase the income on this portfolio by 50 grand a year. How can we show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio? And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs. I know it's shocking. In investment portfolios, we're going to show you all those hidden costs are on those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products, show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So all you have to do is text or call us at 844-752-6692. That number again is 844-752-6692. We have a few slots left. So give us a call if you want to take a look at your portfolio. 844-752-6692. Well, Jen, always, <laughs> always a pleasure. Having Jenny Angel on the show is- So fun. It is so fun. It's so fun. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I still think about our co-hosting that one episode and hopefully get to do it again. Yes. I bring a little sarcasm to the table, I think. A little sarcasm, <laughs> a little more color. I mean, Jen, what can't you do? <laughs> I know. I do do it. All. Well, thanks for being on the show. Another great show this weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.